Hello, this is Alokthon Plays, and a little while ago I posted a video on how to craft fusion igniters and stasis devices with an assembly line in a hauler uh, cargo inventory. And user Dozer, or Dozer, excuse me if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, asked to see a tour of my farms. As I'm a base builder and a farm builder, I have a lot of farms. But as I was filming that at a farm I used to plant uh, st uh, star bulbs, I thought that it would make sense to do a video of the farms that I have to make stasis devices in Euclid. These are public farms. I put a post up on Reddit about a month or so ago with uh, addresses to these, which I will link to down in the comments. But I found a system that has four or five of the six main biomes, and I planted or and I created a bunch of farms where I could do as much of the planting as I could outside. And right now I'm at the one uh, where I do frostwort. So this is, excuse me, I changed pages from where I was. This is um, the Aquapa farm on planet Kolkik, and these are all in the system. A Ekojori, which has four planets and, and two moons. And again, this is the one in the frozen biome. And I have 60 frostwort plants planted here. And I have over there, I have a cobalt farm? I don't, I don't remember. And over there, I have a magnetic uh, ferrite farm. And up there, you can see that I have a couple of teleport relay stations. Up there is a dioxide deposit. So this is very small. I tend to make my farms pretty small because I don't want to use a lot of resources. They're small but dense. So here we have the radon. I'm sorry, it, it's it's a radon farm over there. That, that holds uh, 10,000 units of radon, which will allow you to make all the enriched carbon that you want. So this teleports you over to the radon the radon farm right there. Then I have up here, this leads to the top of that mesa because I couldn't find a dioxide farm close by or I'm sorry, a, a, a dioxide hotspot. This is just a dioxide uh, uh, deposit that's enclosed for your mining convenience. Those take a long time to grow back. You have to have your train edit reset to, to get it to grow back. But uh, So it's not a great source of dioxide, but if you're in need, you can find some there. I generally just buy dioxide, to be honest. And then this one is the magnetic ferrite. Now you don't need magnetic ferrite in order to make uh, stasis devices, but you do need uh, a pure ferrite and so you can use this refiner to change the magnetic ferrite to pure fer ferrite and just in case you need something I have a trade terminal here I don't know if it happens to sell dioxide but if you need more ferrite dust or if you need metal plating you can always get it here oh look at that it also sells platinum and Pugnium. This is not a wealthy system, so it doesn't sell a lot of that stuff, but there is a little bit here just in case you need it. And you have a save point and a place to hang out and rest if you want to uh, do some refining here. That is that message module. I think I should probably delete it because you can s it pops up all the friggin' time. So, this is the first base, and then I will take you to the second one. Hold on. I mentioned once or twice uh, that these are farms for stasis devices and fusion igniters. And I say that a few times in this video, that is incorrect. This is merely a series of farms for 10 stasis devices. I gave up on doing fusion igniters on this particular farm for simplicity reasons, I think. But uh, so when you hear me mistake that, I apologize. Uh, I also wanted to show you a close-up of one of the of the mines. These are all very small mines because I'm only doing 10, uh, 10 stasis devices. So I only have three gas extractors here and five or six uh, 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 supply depots. There's also one in the main building, which is why I, I, I say six. 
Um, so this isn't a great example of how to make deeply complex mines. But I do want to point out one thing, and that's that this, that all of my supply depots are only connected once. Ooh, look at that. I have eight here in, in, instead of six. Um, but this pipe goes from here to here to here to here to here, and then it goes off to the, 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 the main building. But then the two rows are only connected here. I'm not cross-connecting in that mess in there. And so then these go from here to here to here to here to here to here to here. And then I go to the extractors. So I always make sure to build my uh, depots with an S or an E pattern. And I'll show you what I mean about that here in a second. And that's because the, the less complex you can make your piping, the less likely you are to have really strange errors. Errors that are incredibly hard to troubleshoot without just wiping out all the piping and starting over. So I'm going to go over to my lush farm because that has a nice flat area where I can demonstrate this. So I'll be right back. Here we are at the Priet colony and this is the Starball farm. It has a hundred starball plants, and it has uh, gut rot and mordite in biodomes. If you've seen my other farming video, this is going to look familiar because this is where I made that video. So like I said, I have gut rot, I have mordite, and because this system didn't have a desert planet, this is also where all the echinic cactus or cactus flesh is. So I have all of those. And then over there, I have a nitrogen farm. I, ha I find it curious that we've started calling mines farms. We have radon farms, we have active Indian farms. No, those are mines. I have a radon mine here. I have a, a, a galactic terminal because you always need one of those. This is a secondary uh, refiner. I have one also in the big building. And although this isn't needed to make uh, stasis devices, I also have a bunch of nip nip here. I've been testing uh, the the building limits on nip nip since it's one of the ones that causes pro problems with base construction. So I haven't built it all in here, but there is certainly enough nip nip here for you to start your own farm if you want. As I mentioned, there's a nitrogen farm here, holding 4,500 nitrogen, and that is just right over there. And then the relay, which you can kind of see in the building, which would lead you to uh, my powers uh, hotspot, which is over there. I don't have a paraffinium mine anywhere, uh, which you need to make aronium, but you can make paraffinium out of sulfurine and magnetic ferrite, both of which I do have mines for at some of these bases. Okay, we're back at my lush farm. I apologize for the rain. It almost always rains here. He's only three meters tall. That's, that's not so big. But I have a nice flat uh, surface here, so I wanted to, to demonstrate a few things. And first of all, you may be wondering how I get my plants in these nice rows. I have found since I built this that those nice rows actually kind of makes things hard to harvest, and so I haven't been planting things quite so close. But all you do to do that is you activate your build camera. So you bring up your build menu, which I already happen to have on Star Bramble, and on PS3, if you look down at the bottom of, of the build menu, on the sort of right it says toggle build camera, press in L3. So when you do that, you can see I'm standing right over here, but I have a free swing camera that I can do what I want. So then I can just plant and, and, and I just move my reticule down until it turns green again. And I plant another plant. And that gives me nice straight rows. But the last thing I need is more 
star bulbs, so I'm going to delete those. And I also mentioned that I uh, make my supply depots with specific patterns. So let's go to the industry. Let's put up a couple of supply depots. And I'm not going to put these nearly as close together as I normally put them because this is for demo purposes. You can see I have a hauler there off to the left. That's the hauler that I keep my metal plates in, <laughs> which is why I called it down. Let's do a little bit more of that. Let's build 10 here because that's a nice round number. And again, I'm not, I'm deliberately not making them close together because I want to be able to stop that. I want to be able to sh ah. maybe if I swing around over here that'll make it easier. Even though this is a demo, I still seem compelled to make them straight. Now I have them backed up into the trees, so I can't get any further back. All right. So if I were going to hook this up to my nitrogen farm which is up there. And the nitrogen farm only consists of those two extractors and the supply depots in there. But if I wanted to hook, hook those up, you know, I might first just run this over to there. But for these, what I wouldn't do is connect all of these in the center. I'm going to do them in a row. So each one is only connected to one or two others. So that row is all, all, all connected. And I'm going to do the same to this row. And then connect these here. But I'm not going to connect, say, this one to that one, or this one to that one. Because that creates all sorts of weird errors, which, I, as I mentioned, are really hard to uh, troubleshoot. So I don't have enough room to, to make another row here. But if I were going to connect this row as well, again, I would connect this one to there. So I've made sort of an E with, ah, with this, with the top row and the middle row and the bottom row all connected to each other, but, but, but the rows themselves are only connected on one end. I could also do it in an S with, uh, with the supply depots on the far right connected to each other and the ones on the far left not. But again, I, I want to make it so there's only one path for the, for the thing that I'm extracting to travel. Otherwise, again, you get really weird errors and then you have to disconnect all of your piping and it's just a pain in the butt. I also wanted to show my power station because uh, since these are uh, mostly unpowered farms, I don't have a lot of big power stations, and I do a lot of these with solar panels. Here's my nit my nitrogen uh, mine, but my power station is way the heck over here, and power doesn't have the same problem that that supply depots do. You can cross connect them to you, your heart's con content. So I have five or six of these here. I'm generating. A total of 500 uh, kp. I'm sorry, I'm generating a total of 735 kp and I'm using 500 of it. So I could probably uninstall one or two of these EM generators and I would be fine. But I have them in a building because this, because this planet has uh, some storms. And also, I have a little front yard here. This bar that I have, these little quarter walls, is usually enough to keep the, the predators out. There are some really active predators on this planet, and I just wanted to, I wanted to be able to work without them bothering me. 
So this is a usually enough to, to, to keep them away, even having this arch. They usually won't come through this arch. Occasionally they will. I don't quite know what, what the deal with that is. But, but for the most part, if you want to have an area even temporarily free from predators, just building a quarter wall around the area is enough to do that for you. So this is my power station. It's not huge, but it does the job. And there's my, my uh, I tend to build my power pylons out of pipes, and then that goes off into the distance to um, that relay station and on to the next and on to the next and on to the next in order to take the power back to the main farm. Here we are at Cochirn Farm on planet Tarani J38. This is obviously the gamma root uh, farm. I have 80 gamma root planted out, out here. There is also oxygen here, over there. Uh, you don't need oxygen directly, I don't think, to make uh, stasis devices, but you do need condensed carbon, and you can refine, you can refine oxygen to carbon at a one-to-one, -one and then condensed carbon at, I think, one-to-two. Um, but so anyway, there's oxygen there. We have a, la a landing pad with some bars around it so you don't fall off down into the lake. And then over there, we have a uranium mine. I don't think you need a lot of uranium to make this stuff, but it's always handy to have. You can see it's not a huge mine, but it's enough to at least uh, p power your... Uh... Oh, what does uranium do? Is it launch? Anyway, whatever you need your uranium for. So here you can collect your oxygen go visit the mine with this teleporter if you want. Then there is your uranium. It's not a huge uranium mine, but it'll last you a little while. There's a, the teleporter if you happen to want to go visit it. You can take your ease here while you refine if you want. Save point, because those are always useful. A galactic terminal if you need to buy stuff and then this just leads off to the, the landing pad and this is the final farm this is Dextia farm on planet Yalshamt Omega I love the names that Hello Games does and this is in a scorched biome so we have 80 sol sol solarium selenium plants sorry I'll put, pronounce that correctly one of these decades this one also has sulfurine and phosphorus. It kind of has cobalt, but not really, and I'll explain that in just a sec. But you can see I've got lots of uh, selenium plants down there. You can also see on my HUD that I have a couple of uh, predators which are eager to get me. Those are winged little feline cat things, so if you need feline livers, this is a good place to get them. Uh, so I think that's my sulfurine mine. Let's go see. So the main cabin here, as always, has a save point. It has a refiner, only a medium refiner this time. It has a place to hang out if you want to wait to refine things. It has a phosphorus uh, pickup, 225 phosphorus. I think this is the sulfurine one. Yep, a ton of sulfurine. And a teleporter, or I'm um, sorry, a base teleporter unit. And then, as always, a galactic trade terminal. Where does this go? Okay, this teleporter leads to a cobalt mine, but I don't think it's going to work for visitors because I believe you can only have one active base on a planet that people will see. And so here's where I can pick up the cobalt. But this is actually on a different base. The base boundary is right here. So I don't think you as a visitor is even going to see this. But um, the cobalt is out here and thunk thunk. And it happens to be next more sol selenium if you want that. But again, I don't think you as a visitor would see that, which I think is a real shame. Oops. Forgive me, I got lost. Here we go. Back to the main base. It's a long teleporter sequence. Um, 
but since I don't think you as a visitor can see cobalt, there is a couple of uh, caves here which you can mine co cobalt at, um, but unfortunately uh, uh, I don't have a good way to provide it with, 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 with my current farm setup. However, you can see this little guy running away. Well, he just phased out. But this is also a site that has the, the proto bears, the proto geck um, uh, critters. And so if you need proto sausage or proto, uh, proto milk, this is a place to get those. That's my power supply there. And I can't remember where the sulfurine mine goes. Let's see if we can, or where the sulfurine, I bet it's over there. Yes, with, with the green star. So those are the bases I have. As I mentioned, these are public. You are welcome to come visit and harvest these. Um, I have a ton of uh, farms and mines all over, both in this gal galaxy and others. And so even if uh, taking some something from a, pu a public mine hurt the person who built the mine, I am not damaged because I have resources everywhere. I've been playing this game forever and I have all the money I need. So anyway, I hope you found these videos useful. Uh, you are welcome to use these farms. And if you want to uh, subscribe, that would be great. If not, uh, I hope you have a great day. Thanks.